John chapter 3, we're going to be uh, looking at verse number 1, be reading down through about verse number 17, and we'll just see what the Lord has for us this evening. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but can, canst not tell whence it cometh and whither it goeth. So is every one that is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus answered and said unto him, How can these things be? Jesus answered and said unto him, Art thou a master of Israel, and knowest not these things? Verily, verily, I say unto thee, We speak that we do know, and testify that we have seen, and you receive not our witness. If I have told you earthly things, and you believe not, how shall you believe if I tell you of heavenly things? And no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man which is in heaven. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. And I want us to go back to verse number 16. And that's where our text verse is going to be tonight. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your gift of salvation. Thank you for your love. God, I thank you that uh, old lost sinners uh, can come to you and be saved by your marvelous grace. Father, speak to our hearts right now, and we'll thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. You can be seated. Uh, God's amazing grace. You know, we have been made stewards. Those of us that are saved by God's marvelous grace, stewards of the manifold grace of God. And we're to be sharing that grace of God with a lost and dying world. We're told that we're to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Well, tonight, with the help of the Lord, I'm going to uh, <laughs> preach or I'm going to do something here tonight about I'm amazed. That amazing grace. Boy, I tell you what, there's nothing like the grace of God. That love that is undeserved. We don't deserve it. What we deserve is hell. And I'm amazed uh, at the love of God, how he loves us, and how uh, we don't deserve it. But you know, there's a whole lot of things that I'm amazed at in, in our day. I, I, I'm amazed at biology. You know, the Bible says over there in Genesis chapter 1, in the beginning God created. And you know, uh, man has never been able to create biology. Oh, he can grow stuff in the test tube in the, in the laboratory, but not like God can take nothing and make something. You know, how, how many of us in, in the lab have been able to make a dog or a cat or a human being uh, from nothing or a plant? Hey, I, I, I just like sometimes to stop and look at God's creation. Hey, we have a, a one of those hummingbird feeders outside uh, of our kitchen window, and we sit there and eat, eat uh, a meal, and those hummingbirds just back and forth at that uh, feeder. And, you know, only God can make something that looks like a bug and fly like a bug and got wings and feathers. Hey, a uh, man can't do that. 
And it amazes me how that little thing can, can, can just hover right there over that little feeder and stick that mouth in that little hole and, and don't beat it all around. Just, and it amazes me. God did that. It amazes me that God can, can take an old uh, striped tomcat all striped up and patterned in it, uh, on the fur and if you take one of those uh, strands of hair, if you uh, inspect it, it's got colors to it. You know, well, them black hairs and them brown hairs and them white hairs that make up the pattern. No, it's not. They all got colors mingled all through that. And if you shave that old cat down, he has that on his meat too. He does. Oh, preacher, I don't believe that. Hey, my mama had one and they had her fixed and they shaved her belly. She had spots on it. When they shaved the belly, it's spots on the meat. Hey, only God can do that. I'm amazed at the creation of God. It just amazes me uh, what God has done. I mean, flowers and plants and trees and, and all the things. Man can't do that. I'm amazed at that. I'm not only amazed at biology. Hey, I'm amazed at, in our day of technology. I mean, there's some things that we have in our day in 2019 that they didn't have when I was coming up. A uh, cell phone, that was something out of Star Trek. I mean, you know, we didn't have all that stuff. And now we got a little box. It's uh, basically a handheld computer. We didn't have anything like that. Big screen TVs, uh, you know, fiber optics and all these things. And I have no clue what they are. I mean, you know, when they die, I just have to throw them in the trash and get something else. I got one I want to talk to you about anyway. Uh, I'm amazed at the technology that we have. You know, you go out there and you put the key in the, in the vehicle and crank it and it runs. And some of them run fast, don't they, amen? <laughs> and, uh, hey, but I'm amazed at things of this life. Hey, I'm amazed at the apathy in our day among God's people. I'm amazed uh, how people, uh, God's people, have that apathetic attitude that I don't care. Well, you know, a good definition of apathy is not being excited about something that you ought to be excited about. I'm amazed at the apathy of God's people about the lost. Boy, we ought to be excited about getting that gospel out, brother. We ought to be excited about telling somebody about Jesus, about handing a track out, about living our life that the, the light of the Lord Jesus will shine through us, that somebody will see a difference and somebody will want to know what that difference is. Why are you like you are? Why do you talk like you do? Why do you go where you do and walk like, why, why? But God's people are apathetic. It, well, I'm saved and that's all that matters, me and mine. It amazes me. Boy, uh, if someone hadn't have told us about Jesus or hadn't got us to a place to hear the gospel message, we'd all be on our way to hell. I'm amazed at the apathy of God's people. And I'm amazed at the apathy of, let's see, how do I want to put this? The forgetfulness and the ungratefulness of what God did for us. You know, why do we get so apathetic, so get so used to, or get so unexcited about salvation? Do you realize that, that we were on our way to hell? <laughs> we were in a place that was uh, helpless, a place that was hopeless, and we could not get out on our own, that old horrible pit of sin. And Jesus came to planet earth. He saw our need and did something about that need. Hey, went to Calvary, paid the price for our sins so that we could go free. Boy, I tell you what, that ought to excite you. Hey, if you was in a, a deep, dark hole, slimy and filthy and wet and damp, and you couldn't get out, and somebody came to where you <laughs> and rescued you, wouldn't you be excited about that? You would. We, but, but I think we've got uh, used to uh, our salvation. We've got used to going through the motions. We've got used to church services as normal, and we lose sight. We become apathetic. I'm amazed that we're not excited to preach. Well, you just don't know what I'm going through. Yeah, if you're saved, I know what you was going through. <laughs> you was on your way to hell, and somebody loved you enough. Somebody paid your sin debt so you could go free. We ought not ever lose the excitement about being saved. Boy, that ought to be fresh and new every day. So, preacher, well, it just seems like the things of the world are just knock my shout out. Well, I understand that. You know, things of this old world do, do drag us down and, 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 and discourage us. 
But what we ought to do, and when those times come, we ought to just go back to that day. Go back to that day that Jesus pulled us out of the pit. <laughs> when he pulled us out of the pit, hey, we ought to remember that. And, and when the devil gets on your case, just tell him to leave me. I'm a child of God. I'm out of the pit. I'm in his hand. I'm on my way to glory. He supplied all my needs. He blesses me. He comforts me. He guides me. He's always there, never leaves, never forsake. Devil, leave me alone. I'm amazed. I'm amazed. But you know what amazes me the most? <laughs> what amazes me the most is John 3.16. You know, that's the gospel in a nutshell. You know, if you didn't have but one verse, that right there would get the job done. <laughs> For God so what? Loved. Who did he love? The world. Who does that include? Everybody. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Paid the price. That whosoever. Now, what does that word whosoever mean? That means whosoever. That means every, the entire, the whole. That means everybody. Whosoever believes in him should not perish. That means go to hell. But have everlasting life. I'm amazed about God's love. His amazing grace. There's three things I want us to see tonight and we'll go to the house. I'm amazed about in John 3, 16. I'm amazed... He loves us as condemned sinners. It amazes me that God, a holy God, a righteous God, would have anything to do with old lost sinners. That amazes me that he would even fool with us. I mean, just, just filthy, rotten sinners. That's all we all preach. I ain't so bad. Well, that's not what the Bible says. The Bible says, whereas by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin. And so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. Hey, we're all in the same boat. We're all in pitiful shape. And, and I, it amazes me that he would even uh, fool with condemned sinners. Ezekiel chapter 18, in verse number 4, and verse number 20, uh, God says, the soul that sinneth, it shall die. Verse 4, he repeats himself in verse 20, same thing. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. We're just condemned sinners. We are. We're deserving of hell. We're on our way to hell. Hey, uh, and it, it, we, he's told us what we are. So he says the, because we're a sinner, because that sin nature has passed down the line to every one of us, Hey, we're deserving of judgment. We're deserving of punishment. The Bible says in Romans chapter 6 and verse 23, the wages or the price to be paid for, the wages of sin is death. And that's physical death and that is spiritual death. Hey, we do, we're just old condemned sinners. But it, verse 17 here in John chapter 3, it says, but God sent not his son to the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved because he loved us. He loves us as condemned sinners. You know, we're just old sinners. And, and, and he's a holy God. And to look at us would be like us looking at something filthy. Something nasty. You know what I, 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 I come across my mind as I was thinking about it, as we are condemned sinners and a holy God looking at us in our condition. How many of y'all like a cockroach? You know a cockroach is one nasty thing. I don't know why in the world God made a cockroach. Well, I, I reckon he got a purpose for him. But, you know, maybe one day we can ask, Lord, why did you make that nasty cockroach? He gets in my house and just gets in our food, just made, makes a mess of things. But, you know, we look at a cockroach in your house. What's the first thing you're going to do if you see him? I'm going to kill that rascal. That's right. Nasty thing. We're going to take care. <laughs> That's right. Or get the raid out and spray him, just choke him to death or whatever. But we, we do that. 
but in God's sight, that's about what we are. Or a fly. How many of y'all like a nasty fly? I hate a fly. You know a fly, what they do? They fly around, buzz all around, and they land on something. Y'all know what they do when they land on something? They throw up on it. They land on your cheeseburger, and they throw up on it. And you turn around and eat the thing. Oh, my. Land on your cup where you've been drinking at, and they throw up on it. They try, that's the way they eat. They throw up on it, the acid's in there, and it's all that stuff, and they suck it back up. Hey, but a nasty creature, but God's got a purpose for them as well. But compared to a holy God in us, hey, we're nothing but a, but a nasty cockroach or a nasty fly that's deserving of being killed. <laughs> but I'm amazed that he loves us even as condemned sinners. It just amazes, it just blows me away that a holy God would love uh, individuals like us and be willing to come to earth to pay the price for our sins. Hey, he loves us as condemned sinners. It amazes me. Not only does it amaze me that he loves us as condemned sinners, it amazes me that uh, he loves us, listen to this, in spite of ourselves. Have y'all ever have y'all ever messed up and failed the Lord? We all have. We, in spite of ourselves, He still loves us. Hey, we're just old sinners. The Bible says, as is written, there's none righteous, no, not one, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But it says that God commendeth His love toward us. In that while we were yet sinners, in spite of ourselves, Christ died for us it amazes me that it, it, the way we are uh, the way we uh, as saints are you know how many of you since you've got saved have never messed up anybody I don't see no hands every one of us messed up probably if we're honest on a daily basis but he still loves us and he's given us a verse if we confess our sins he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Hey, hey, he loves us in spite of ourselves. And he loves sinners in spite of themselves too. You know, I believe God watched over me. I know he did. Uh, those years before I got saved, he loved me. Hey, and he had a plan for me. He knew the beginning to the end and he knew what he was going to do. And, and he love me in spite of myself you know some people it's hard to love have y'all ever know anybody it's hard to love i'll tell you one thing i know some folks hard, hard to love but god loves us in spite of ourselves hey when we're uh doing things we ought not do when we're uh saying things we ought not say when we're doing in a place where I had no business being. You ever heard anybody say, I know my, my mom and daddy had told me this uh, time and time again when I get in trouble. They said, boy, y'all ought not been there. Y'all ought not been there. I'm, I remember I got on how many whippings as a, as a young man. I had an older brother, and he was all the time getting into something. And I just seemed to, to tag along, and I was there when it happened. And uh, I told daddy, I said, daddy, I ain't done nothing. He said, well, boy, you was there. Y'all not been there. Oh, well. Hey, God loves us in spite of ourselves for what we do. Hey, I, I'll give you a good illustration how God loves us. And, he, he, you know, he, he takes care of us. How many of y'all seen these blue tail, tail lizards that run around here? I mean, we have them coming to church all the time. And, and if I don't get them out, they'd be up on y'all's chairs. Some of y'all ladies would be, be having, a, having a running fit, and it wouldn't be in the spirit, ain't it? Uh, but those blue-tailed lizards, they're prevalent in this area. And we, we had one of them at the house, and it got in the house somewhere or another. I don't know, and it's a pretty good-sized one. And we got these two little weasel dogs, miniature dachshunds. I call them weasel dogs. We had these, and, and they got on his trail. Oh, they was all over the house after that, that lizard. And they finally got him cornered up under the TV. And one of them grabbed him by his tail and jerked his tail off. Then, and the tail was laying in the floor going like that, you know. He's in a place he didn't have no business being. Ought to have stayed himself outside, and he went and got his tail bit off, amen. But uh, we couldn't find him. Looked all over everywhere, couldn't find him. And I don't even remember if I told her or not. Uh, so I come home one, it's probably a, a week later. 
went in our uh, bathroom, in our bedroom, and we got one of them big old garden tubs, you know, useless. You know, just sit there and collect dust. Don't never use them things. But I looked over in that thing, and there he was. He fell over in there, and he couldn't get out. <laughs> he's in a place of helplessness and hopelessness. Oh, he's in a mess. But he had no tail neither. <laughs> I'm in mean, bad shape. Bad shape. And uh, I thought, well, you know, there's a couple things I can do there. I can just reach over there and squish him. I mean, I could. I could have done that. <laughs> oh, preacher, I can't believe you even thought that. Well, I did. It run across my mind. You know, uh, I could reach over there and take care of the problem. He would never come back. Or I could get him up and uh, get him out of the house. And so um, I decided I was going to show him a little grace. <laughs> so I got the trash can up, got over in that tub, and, and got him up in the trash can, carried him out. And let him go. You see, he's in a place he didn't have no business being. And he got in a mess and couldn't get out. But I showed a little grace to him. Amen. Came to where he was at. And carried him where he needed to be. Amen. And I'm so thankful. <laughs> Woo! That a holy God yes, sees us in our mess. Amen. Amen. And he loves us in spite of ourselves. And you know, when the devil comes your way and he gets the whispering in your ear, oh, Brother Justin, the devil, God don't love you. Oh, if he loved you, you wouldn't be going through this financial stuff. Oh, yeah, and, and your children wouldn't be sick and, and all this going on in your way. God don't love you. Hey, tell him to shut up. Amen. But God loves me, and I know he loves me because he loves me in spite of myself, and he loves me as a condemned sinner. How you know he loves it? Because it said God commendeth his love toward us. He didn't just tell us he loved us. He showed us he loved us. You know, it's one thing to tell somebody you love them. It is. I mean, you know, we can tell uh, folk that we love them, and they could be empty words. But if you demonstrate that, and you show, say, I want somebody to show me they love me. Say, just don't tell me you love me. What, what, what's, that, what's that saying that the, uh, uh, that the young people, what, what do y'all say? Don't uh, sing it, but bring it. Is that, is that what they say? Yeah, I, I don't know all them little cliches that the young people use today. Uh, but, hey, don't sing it, bring it. Show me. And I'm so thankful that God did that. He did that on Calvary. Yes, he <laughs> Amen. He loves us as condemned sinners. He loves us in spite of ourselves. And then lastly tonight, he loves us to the uttermost. Yes. Loves us to the uttermost. Over there in Hebrews chapter number uh, 7, and verse number 24 and 25. But this man, because he continueth ever, hath an unchangeable priesthood. Wherefore, he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him. I'm so thankful that he saves to the uttermost. Hey, the Bible says over there in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9, for by grace, that's amazing grace, that's the love of God, for by grace are you saved <laughs> through faith. And that not of yourself, it is the gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. That amazing grace saves to the uttermost. Uh, that word uttermost is the Greek word pont pontilis. I, I just about messed up and pronounced it a, a different way. Pontilis, and it means entire, completion, or full ended. Hey, it, he loves us to the uttermost. He saves to the uttermost. That word pontilis comes from, and I like this too, brother. That word pontilis, that Greek word comes from two uh, Greek words that make it up. It comes from that word, Greek word pause, P-A-S. And that Greek word pause means translated into English, whosoever. <laughs> Uttermost, whosoever, amen. That pause, I, I always like to, when I found out what that word was, I always like to say that P-A-S stands for a poor, poor awful sinner. Whosoever, that's a bunch of poor, awful sinners. But it's also made up of the Greek word telos. You know what that word telos is? <clears throat> that means it's finished. Amen. The Amen. end or it's done. <laughs> so he saves 
to the uttermost. He saves whosoever will. He saves till the end. Uh, and it's finished and it's done. I'm glad that he loves us to the uttermost. Hey, John chapter 13 and verse number 1, it said he loved them unto the end. I'm so thankful that he does. And it's a whosoever will salvation. You know, he just didn't don't love uh, this crowd. And, and I don't love this crowd like the Calvin is saying. No, this crowd over here, I love them so much. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to save them and they're going to heaven. But this crowd over here, uh, I don't love them. And, and they're just going to have to wind up in hell. I, I, that Calvinist doctrine is not the love of God. It's not saved to the uttermost. Saved whosoever will and it's a done deal. Hey, uh, I'm so thankful that he saves to the uttermost. And not only he saves to the uttermost, but when God saves somebody, it's a done deal. I'm amazed. I'm amazed that he loves us like that. Hey, over in, in John, uh, excuse me, Romans chapter 8 and verse number 38. He saves to the uttermost. It's a done deal. It's a whosoever will salvation. Verse 38 says, For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come to the uttermost, amen, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is... Mm. Let me read that again. The love of God, which is in... Christ Jesus. I'm amazed. That amazing grace. Hey, it ought not ever grow old in our heart. We ought to be excited about that. We're just old poor, awful sinners deserving of hell and he came to where we were at. We ought to never forget what we were. Hey, we ought not ever forget what we are. We're just old sinners saved by grace. Hey, we ought to always realize that God loved us so much he was willing to take our place in spite of ourselves. And when he does the job, he does it forever. To the uttermost, to the end, he loves us. Hey, let's, let's tell somebody about that love of God. When was the last time we shared that with somebody? When was the last time we were excited about being saved? When was the last time we were excited about coming to church? Excited about serving the Lord? Excited about our salvation? Well, we've got so much to look forward to. And why would we not want to share that with a lost and dying world? You know, there's ministries all over our land that folks show up, a little handful, they go through the motions, they go home, come back, show up, go through the motions, go home, and just, it just there's no excitement left. It amazes me. I said, Preacher, you just about half crazy. I am. I'm crazy for Jesus. Hey, I wonder sometimes if, if we realize what happened. You know, those that, let's see, how, how do I want to put that nicely? Sometimes those that are forgiven little love us little. But I'm telling you one thing, every one of us, was forgiven a whole lot. Yes, sir. I wasn't so bad, preacher. Every one of us was so bad. Every one of us was so bad we deserve hell. We all love him. And we all love folks. We all tell them about Jesus. Calvary Baptist Church ought to be one place that's excited, on fire. Just, I can't wait to tell somebody about the Lord. Preacher, I just don't know how to do that. Well, if you get if you realize what you were and where you were and what Jesus has done for you, it won't be hard to tell your classmate. It won't be hard to tell your, the person you work with. It won't be hard to tell family members that Jesus saves, Jesus loves us, Jesus uh, provides salvation to whosoever will. But I think we forget that. <laughs> hey, there's enough folk in this room right now to shake our nation. If everybody get on fire, it would. But we sit back and we, we just take for granted. Well, I'm saved and I'm glad of it. But, you know, I don't know about everybody else. Hey, let's get on fire for it. We talk about revival. You know what revival really is? That's falling in love with Jesus all over again. That's what it is. Just like it was when we got saved. Do you remember that day? Think back right now. How was it when you got saved? Preacher, I don't remember. Hey, guess what? If you don't remember, 
Maybe something didn't happen. Maybe the transaction didn't take place. Hey, may, maybe you just need to uh, do some business with God and get that thing settled because you don't get a second chance. Hey, you, you can be in church all your life and, and, and know every preacher, know every Sunday school teacher, know every verse in the Bible and still wind up and die and go to hell if you're not saved. I'm afraid one reason we don't have excitement and the power in the Baptist church. Now, I ain't talking about nobody else. I'm talking about the Baptist church. I think there's a whole lot of counterfeit. Man, I tell you one thing. I remember when I got saved. <laughs> I remember the day on a Sunday right down there at an old-fashioned altar that used to be a dance floor. Hey, I won't ever forget what Jesus did for me. Cleanse me, wash me from the top of my head to the bottom of my foot. And I, I've been different. I've been new, been born again, new creature in Christ. And it, it, it just gets better all the time. Amen. It does. You preach, are you excited like that all the time? No. My old flesh gets in the way a whole lot. Right. But it ought not. Well, I love it. I'm telling you what, he loved us when we were so unworthy, so unlovely. Are you saved tonight? That's my question. Do you know it? Was there a time in your life when Jesus loved you when you was unlovable, loved you as a condemned sinner? Was there a time? Can you remember that time? Preacher, I don't remember that time. Maybe you ought to come down here and have a time tonight. I've got, I've got family members that tell me, oh, God's going to give me a second chance. There's no second chances. You have to make that decision in this life. Amen. When you take your last breath, that's it. Amen. No more chances. God don't weigh you good and you bad and all that foolishness. It just don't work like that, does it, brother? No, you've got to get it settled up now. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. So maybe some folk just... Ain't got it. Preacher, you judging. No, I ain't judging. I'm just telling you. That's the way it is. Amen. Hey, I played religion for years. But <laughs> Woo! Until Jesus came in my heart. <laughs> hey, I was on my way to hell. You know what, what frightens me about young people that are raised around this all the time? Raised in Christian homes? My daughter's raised in a Christian home. All they knew was to save mom and daddy. They didn't know anything different. They, all, they was in church all the time. But what, what uh, frightens me about that, you know, they trust you in your nap. Well, I'm all right. You know, we've been in church all my life. You know, right. If you don't have, if you can't remember, I don't, I'm not saying the date, the number, the month. I, I'm not saying all that. Uh, uh, you know, the, but if you don't remember when it happened, Maybe it ain't happened. Maybe that's the reason you're not excited about Jesus. <laughs> Maybe that's the reason you, 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 you're, you're not rejoicing over the fact that God loves us. It, and you're not amazed. I'm amazed. I'm amazed God even fooled with me. Not, not, less, not, not, not y'all. I'm, I'm just amazed that God even loved old sinner like me. Because guess what? I know me, Chase. <laughs> I just old wicked rascal. Playing religion. But God loved me. <laughs> Save me. I hope, you, I hope you're saved. That's the most important decision anybody will ever make. Preacher, I wish you'd quit harping. I wish you'd quit preaching. All, all I hear you ever preach is about being saved. That's the most important decision. How to get out of the valley and how to make it through and all that. Hey, God will take care of all that stuff. But the most important decision in 2019 is whether or not you know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. That's what's wrong with America. That's what's wrong with our homes. That's what's wrong with our churches. Folk need Jesus. And I don't mean just a few. I mean everybody. Because it's a whosoever will. Salvation. Amen. I'm amazed that God loves old sinners. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever, that whosoever, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life.